Hey, you guys, real quick before we get into this video, I am speaking on black men because I am a black man and I am speaking on the collective of black men. So as we say in the South, if it don't apply, let it fly. You are tuned into Lemon Relax. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we're gonna be discussing this viral post that's going around. I saw it on Facebook. Um, I also saw it on, before I decided to do this video, on Ball Alert, a girl did a TikTok reacting to the situation. Basically, it is some white girls in a group chat speaking about their real, true feelings about black men as far as um, the dating area is concerned. So with that being said, I caught it from my cousin on Facebook earlier. I've already blurred out the name, so we can go ahead and I can give y'all what the uh, man posted. This was from a black man, by the way. So his response is, oh my, mouth emoji or mouth covering emoji. They got exposed and the last four pics are their piss poor apologies. I'm going to hold my brothers accountable because you self-loathing black men need help however judging by their apologies i feel like they were speaking out of bitterness because the same black men who they use and fetishize do it right back and probably do it worse the whole black man white woman dynamic is parasitic on both ends i say all this to say you can't be the pot calling the kettle black oh the irony puns very much intended i typed all this just to crack that joke p.s state black women all right, so that was a very kumbaya way of approaching the situation. I want to take things a bit deeper. Um, a couple things I want to get out of the way first. I feel like this conversation can get very convoluted and very disingenuous, um, especially on black men's end. There is this notion that black women are upset when black men date out. And while to an extent there are definitely some black women who I say, I say, I can say that the way they respond, yeah, they are upset that you're with a white woman. However, we're forgetting two big things. For one, black women are not the only women who think like that. In fact, they're not the only gender. It's not just a gender or a race thing. People naturally, even though race is a made up ideology, people are tribal. And for those who don't know what that means, tribalism is the behavior and attitude that stem from strong loyalty to one's own tribe or social group. So when you have a group of women that have been raised from birth to be so so race loyal to this race, to the point of being detrimental to their health, you know what I'm saying? You got black women out here marching in the streets, being put on the front line, allowing themselves to be put on the front line getting hit with rubber bullets. And I mean, we don't even need to recap summer 2020. We all was there for it. So nonetheless, when you have women who have been engineered to be like that over years and years of um, manipulation, of course, they're going to feel uh, very strongly towards a black man stepping outside of his race. But they're not the only ones. A white man would feel that way about a white woman. In fact, they have memes about it. I'm about to cast some up now. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. A black man. We've seen how black men felt when Gabby Sidibe came out with her white man. And it's like, of all people, Gab Gabbaray Sidibe? Really? And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that personally, like, there's anything wrong with her, but we know how colorism works in this community. We know how fat phobia works in this community. You know what I'm saying? Gabrielle Sidibe's chances of having a black man, she would have been better off just dying alone. Let's just, be, let's just be honest. You know what I'm saying? And you see how black men treated that news. Uh, Twister emerged from what time capsule? to come out and throw a shot at her with that meme. And by the way, shout out to Bernice Burgos for checking his ass. Sorry, I'm trying to stop cussing, but let's just go ahead and say it, checking his ass. Because I know a lot of women would have taken that meme as a compliment to them when really it was a diss towards both of them. And I think overall, you know, the fact that Gabby had such happy news and it was derailed, I think what also embarrassed me even more, uh, also embarrassed me equally was the fact that y'all did all this showing out in front of this white man. 
So I think it just hits a little bit more when I see that other races see the dysfunction within our community. It's embarrassing. It really is. And that's exactly what we're here to talk about today because these white girls in this group chat, they know that at the end of the day, there's a subsection of black men that will worship the ground they walk on. So with that being said, tribalism is a thing. Black women are not the only one who are, ones who are tribal. We could also use Eve as, Eve as an example, Serena Williams, uh, what is her name? What is her name? The one from Queen, Queen and Slim. I didn't watch the movie. Um, oh my God, I lost it. I lost it. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But um, nonetheless, these women get attacked day by day. They don't have this long list of going at their men. Serena Williams has never said anything bad about black men to this day. Jody Smith Turner has never, there we go, that's her name. Jody Smith Turner has never said anything bad about black men. The, the most, if you want to get in your feelings, she did say that white men were the first man to make her be feel beautiful. However, again, like I said earlier, colorism. And she's a dark skinned, skinny black woman. We all know how in this community curves are praised up and down. And anything besides curves, if you were a little too thick or if you were a little too skinny, you kind of SOL. But y'all ain't ready for that conversation. But at any rate, Eve, of all people, Eve dated nothing but black men up until that white man. I think that was the first white man she dated, if I'm not mistaken, from what I could remember from listening to her interview. So with that being said, there's no long like, list. And those are just celebrity women. You know what I'm saying? And I know y'all like to say, oh, well, you can't use celebrities as the standard. Okay, where is the black woman comparing the baby and Chris Brown to black uh, to, to pit bulls on Twitter? Where is the black woman? Because if I recall, that was a black man who did that. Where's the black woman holding call-in shows and calling black men average at best and saying, oh, you have eight kids. Nobody is going to want you. And you are average at best even though I'm a dating coach that's been divorced twice. Where are the black women doing that? I'd like to know. Please leave me the links down below. You know what I'm saying? These are everyday black men. That's it. They're everyday black men. Even some of the celebrities. Yeah, they have some sort of esteem or prestige as far as their status goes, but they are still the everyday black man in their heads. They think the same. That's why they're getting locked up now, doing dumb stuff. But at any rate, another video for another time. Um, even the Vine people, you know what I'm saying? Those are everyday black men, the Vine boys and the TikTok boys and quiet as kept. Really, we should have been checked a lot of that stuff in the Vine days because all this TikTok stuff, I think it's just more overtly in your face now. But a lot of those dudes that came up on Vine, King Bach, he just did a TikTok the other day where it was like white girls or black girls and they went to the side of black girls and then they last minute ran over to the white girls trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? That black outrage, I'm telling you, is very profitable. And unfortunately, sometimes it be your own who does it. And even off of the dating tip, you don't have to be a black woman who interracially dates. Just do something that the collective of black people, even though we love crying, we're not a monolith. Do something that we don't agree with. You know, look at how Ice Cube is getting points for trying to work with Trump. But what did y'all do to Chrisette Michelle four years ago? And not even just four years ago, because recently, um, what well, wasn't recent, I believe it was a year ago or some change, she had posted that she had a miscarriage. And you had black people under there telling her, oh, well, that's what you get for performing at the Trump inauguration. Where's that same smoke for Kanye West, for Ice Cube, for Steve Harvey, for all these black people who have aligned themselves with Trump because they're worried about their money and not your black A? Where's that smoke for them? I would like to know. Please let me know. We'll wait. Now, earlier I said for one reason or reason number one, but really I ended up saying the other reason, which was y'all can't just shut up and date interracially. You have to down your women in the process, which is a reflection of you. Y'all can sit here and, oh, we're not a monolith and we're individuals all you want to. That's not how the world works. If you're dissing a black woman, you are dissing a black man. That's how it works. And it's not just with black people, it's with any other race of people. 
And why it's taking so long for you Nick Knox to understand this? I, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm really, I'm not even confused. I'm confusion. I'm confusion. Um, at any rate, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the messages that were going on in the group chat. So, with that being said, one post or one particular, one screenshot reads, I'll F with a black guy, even date for a bit, but never marry. OMG, same. I don't see the appeal. Black guys would do anything to to be with a white girl. I need y'all to. If y'all gonna talk mess, please get it right. And that's just all across the board. It don't matter what race or gender you is. But at any rate, it's kind of pathetic. You don't understand OMG. Then explain. They don't have any appeal. In fact, they're least good looking. I think she meant to say that. Next person, LMAO, ask a white guy to come over at 3 a.m. and he'll say no. And now ask a black guy to come over and he'll be there in a heartbeat. All right, next post reads, black men will go above and beyond to please you because being with a white woman to them is a dream come true, exclamation marks. So basically they are easy. If I tell a black boy I want to pee in his mouth, he will let me. No way would a white guy. Black guys have low self-esteem and love us. Isn't that using them? So it's like they're our puppets, I think. There's the, the things in a way I can't see. All right. So those are the group chat messages. I believe there's one more. Let me go check my phone. Oh, never mind. That was it. The next few posts come after, I guess, somebody in the group chat leaked the conversation. And this is their responses. So... This one reads from Lisa Owens. So black guys can openly talk about how we're easy or got no lips. <clears throat> Sorry. And how it's okay to cheat on us and everyone laughs, but we have a private conversation and gets crucified by a reactionary mob. F off. I said what I said and I ain't sorry one bit. Truth hurts tough. LMAO, funny how black women are out here trying to come for us. Girl, it's not my fault. I don't like when they use AAV. E. I really don't like it. But at any rate, <clears throat> it's not my fault. Your self-loathing man lusts after me. Black men can be the ugliest or the prettiest, and he would still drool over me, so mind your business. I think she meant to say black women. Um, we talked about our experience and our experience, black, and in our experience, God damn, I need y'all to get better with this. They are desperate, easy, and have low self-esteem, inferiority complex. He's on Twitter. Tinder, sorry, <laughs> right now, swiping right. No black boy has ever refused me regardless of time or location. All right, Lisa Owens. Next up, Kara. Now, Kara states, first of all, exposing private conversations is effing brood and talking to my friends about my thoughts doesn't make me a racist. If you think I'm racist, feel free to block me and stop talking. LOL, black guys are allowed to say white girls are easy and talk about our snow P word. But saying truthful things, I guess she meant to say, is racist. GTFO. I'm not going to apologize for having a private a private conversation. I don't care what y'all do. Since this B at blank loves exposing private stuff, how would you like it if I expose your stuff? You came for the wrong B and you'll regret it. Black guys aren't suddenly going to stop wanting to F you, you retarded B. All right. Well said, Kara. <laughs> Next up is Daniela. She posts, in light of what happened in the group chat, I just wanted to apologize. We were having a private conversation. It wasn't our intent to sound racist, intention to sound racist. To anyone who was hurt, I'm really sorry. You all know me and you all know I have been an ally to the black community and all minorities. I took part in many Black Lives Matter protests and I will, <laughs> and I will always stand against racism. I'm sorry. And... This last one from Ashley reads, whoever is giving out my social medias, please stop. You're only making things worse. I'm sorry. This should never have gotten, happened to get out. Please, I'm educating myself. Give me a chance and a, or a break and a chance. Ruining my life won't fix anything. All right. So now that we're over all the vanilla tears. Now, as far as the conversation at hand goes, I have no dog in that fight. I don't feel bad for the girls. Um, I do think it's effed up that somebody leaked the group chat, but at the end of the day, you risk that conversation or you risk that happening. I guess y'all need to, you know, choose better in the group chat. 
And these black men need to choose better with these white girls that they are choosing to have entanglements with. Because obviously these women, the way they were speaking, they were, they were talking real spicy. <laughs> there had to be some inkling, some inkling, you know. And then I thought it was real funny. Um, the one who seemed the most apologetic, you know, she brought up the protest. And I thought that was real funny as if that saved her from anything. Because I remember coming down on y'all about the protest because y'all were fetishizing yourselves at the protest. Take a look at these posters, y'all. Hmm. This one reads, your daughter loves every inch of us. Why don't you? And don't just jump on the black men because the white women were at it too. Here's a poster right here. She says she only sucks black peen. So not only are these men comfortable with fetishizing themselves, they're, they like being fetishized. They enjoy this. Women have made money off of this fetishization. There are books written about it, not to mention the adult entertainment industry and this narrative of BBC that they love pushing, which I just, let's just be honest, everybody can't be walking around with 13 inches. Now me, I'm good over here. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Not even start on the whole cuck holding thing where you're basically the play toy of a white couple. And you know, that just gives me slavery tease. But at any rate, not into it. I don't kink shame. You do you. And even off of adult films, one of the biggest movies in the last decade, Get Out. You know what I'm saying? We all remember that movie. But going back real quick to adult films, I think, because um, it kind of rolls off of where I think this misconception has came from, I think a lot of black men overestimate our desirability in the dating pool. Even that white girl at the beginning, she told you. She said straight up, I'll F him. I might even date him for a little bit but I'm not going to marry him. She ain't taking you home to her mom and dad, which most of y'all don't even check if, it's, if, if that would be a safe thing. You know what I'm saying? As far as the racist aspects of it, the potential racism of her parents. But, you know, neither here nor there. That shows how much you care about yourself. Um, but nonetheless, she said you're a play thing. You're something to play with for the moment, to occupy her time. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen this same sentiment uttered in a YouTube video. I can't, I, I couldn't find where it was at. Like because if, of the scarcity. If you grow up as a white girl yes. and you get attention to, from black guys, yes. in my experience and all the other white girls that I know, mm -hmm. we don't think that getting attention from black guys gives you a status of some sort. If you get attention from the white guys, no, you, have, uh, you do have the status more than if you get attention from black guys. As a man, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with that. Well, as a woman who gets attention <laughs> yes. and who grew up in a white culture more than a black culture, yes. I'm going to tell you that getting attention from black guys is not a badge of honor if you're white. Yeah. Okay. And I'm white. You are white. Yes. Yeah, but getting, see it as if status. a white girl gets attention from a white guy, that's more yes. valuable in white culture than if she gets attention from a black guy. If she gets attention from a black guy, that's not a, that doesn't make you a better anything. Like that doesn't raise you in anybody's eyes. As a matter of fact- and In some people's eyes it does. As a matter of fact, it's, it's a little bit of a, like a, oh, you know, she's basically not good enough for the white, so she's good for the black guys. That's how it's looked at. In and when I saw it, it was a couple but it was on somebody else's uh, video. I think they were using it as a talking point. But it was a black man and a white girl. And she basically said black men don't even add to the value. They basically take away. They depreciate the value of a white woman. And she said, y'all don't really do anything. Like, you're just here. And she's just, like, literally a low-key dog walking his ass. Sorry, I told y'all I'm going to stop cussing. She was low-key dog walking his A. Excuse me. To all the black women, which, by the way, shout out to black women. I'm going to insert this screenshot real quick or screen record. Shout out to y'all. I think y'all are finally understanding. You can't fight every fight. And um, I think this is the side of pro blackism or activism, whatever you want to call it, that I think people shy away from this part of the conversation where you, you can't save everybody. I can't. I literally can't. And this is coming from me, a black man. 
These women are telling you straight up. These white women are telling you, look, you're pretty much like my jack in the box. And on top of that, you're a jack in the box that I'm going to keep upstairs in the basement. You're a secret. I'm not even going to let anybody know that I'm effing you or I'm dating you, but I'm going to have fun with you when I want. And then when I get ready to go get married, I'm running off with Brad. So that's what they're telling you or, you know, whoever they decide to run off with. So they're saying it flat out in your face. I can't make no man have self-respect for himself. Black women, you can't do that either. So shout out to the women on Instagram for letting, know, hey, that's their fight. Wipe your hands with it, be done. But at any rate, on to black men, I think that there needs to be a serious conversation held within the swirl, divest, whatever you want to call it, community about these relationships. Are they genuine? Are they not? Um, are they born out of natural love? Are they birthed out of self-hate, self-loathing? What is going on? Um, and I think where there's smoke, there's fire. And I've even seen conversations in the memes of black men essentially green carding white women. Um, basically, since I don't want to compete with the man of this woman, I'm going to get with this woman and get the privileges and accesses that this man has gotten this woman through blood, sweat, and tears. So I think that's also a valid point. And I think that conversation does need to be had. And I think it needs to be had on a serious note. I think black people, we joke a little too much and we have a little too much fun sometimes. Like there's time to be serious and there's time to joke. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I think that conversation needs to be had because I don't, I don't think a lot of these unions are gen genuine. And to be honest, I actually hope that it is a reason. I hope y'all are essentially green carding these women. I wish there was a term that I could use instead of that. But I, I hope that's true for some of these unions, because I'm just going to be honest. If you're going to, you know, betray your ancestors, me personally with interracial dating, I feel like love who you want to love. As long as it's genuine love and there's no self-hate involved, I ain't knocking no interracial dating. But if I am going to betray the ancestors, I may at least go get like, you know, Pamela Anderson back when Pamela Anderson had it going on or Cameron Diaz back in her prime. Like y'all be getting, y'all be calling them snow bunnies, but they really polar bears. And that's all I'm going to say. So with that being said, y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Um, are you embarrassed by this? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel some type of way? Are you indifferent? Let me know what y'all think about the whole situation. And I will get back to y'all on the next video. Peace. That fuego go get you some merch. Did it for Prince. My braids on that perch. Too many niggas who plot and we perch. Suck with this mouth. You gon' leave in a hearse. I can't be fucked with. Niggas can't touch me. Nah.